Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today, I want to talk to you about the TAC-56 assault rifle in Modern Warfare 2. I want to give you my build for it for 6v6, as well as some tips and advice on how you might be able to use it more effectively. And I'm also going to show you some streaks that I put together so that you can get an idea of how you can effectively use this weapon to build success and build streaks in matches. So first, let's jump into my build for it. Here at a high level, I'll show you my overall class loadout. This is pretty standard. The secondary weapon is kind of your personal choice. I'm leveling up the Basilisk right now. I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, tactical equipment, flash grenades are my go-to. Drill charges are my go-to lethal. If you haven't seen my video on drill charges, go check that out. My perk package is Battle Hardened, Bomb Squad, Fast Hands, and Quick Fix. Um, I've recently switched to basically using Fast Hands full-time. I was using Resupply, which is really good for getting extra drill charges and even extra flash grenades, but I found that I was actually losing fights because I wasn't able to throw my fa flash grenade fast enough. Reloading, I could take cover and be tactical about that, so that's not as big an issue, but throwing my equipment faster turns out is quite a big of an bit of an issue, so I'm using fast hands. Dead silence and the deployable cover uh, for my field upgrades, but let's jump into the gun build itself. As usual, uh, for Modern Warfare 2, uh, I'm trying to do a balance of a couple of things. One is I want to keep my aim down sight speed as fast as practically possible. I also want to keep my aiming stability as stable as possible so that my reticle isn't drifting a whole lot just at idle. Um, and then I want to balance that with keeping recoil and control as much as possible. That way you've got a balance of a fast build that you can aim down sights quickly with that's as accurate as possible. Um, and if you didn't see my last video where I talk about the cast off 7.62, uh, I also recommend um, where possible, including attachments that help increase your hip fire spread, uh, well, decrease your hip fire spread, increase your hip fire accuracy so that you can get faster shots on target uh, from the hip. And so that's what you'll see in this build here. I've got the uh, demo clean shot grip, which is increased sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed. This does hurt our recoil control, but I find that especially the sprint, sprint to fire speed is really valuable to have in this game. Um, and obviously the faster aim down sight speed is good too. This usually connects directly to my underbarrel grip because I use this to help get some of that aiming idle stability back, which helps with my accuracy. And we get extra hip fire accuracy here um, with the only con being that it decreases your walking speed, but you're not probably spending a lot of time walking anyway. And if you are walking, Walking slower to keep your footsteps quieter, not a bad thing, so it's almost an advantage. Muzzle attachment I'm using is the Komodo Heavy, and this is because it just focuses primarily on the horizontal recoil control, which is pretty significant on the TAC-56. Um, so rather than having one that kind of balances horizontal and vertical, I found that keeping the horizontal in check was more important. Um, again, we take our hit to aim down sight speed and aiming stability, so that balances a little bit with our underbarrel grip. The Dr. Laser Box is my go-to yet again for increasing um, your hip fire accuracy and improving your hip recoil control. And I'll show you again in the firing range why that's helpful for getting shots on target. And for this, I have the Chrono Mini Pro, although honestly, the iron sights on the TAC-56 are usually pretty clean. Um, so you probably ditch that and go with it. With the TAC-V, I ditch that for sure. Um, but let's go in here and take a look at this build and how quickly you get an ADS. So that's a nice snappy ADS response. And you can see that the uh, accuracy is good. We're not getting a lot of side-to-side -side recoil. And you can see the aiming idle sway is not too bad. You know, it's still a little bit, but um, good for the balance that we have with the ADS speed. And then once again, if you guys didn't see my uh, other video, the reason I like this uh, hip fire laser is you see how much closer keeps our hip fire um, at close range. And what I like about this is it helps you to get shots on target faster as you're aiming down sights. So you can, when someone comes around and a target is in your sights, you can start hip firing as you're bringing your sights up and get kills faster. This makes a difference a lot. So that's why I use the hip fire laser. So here you can see that it allows you to kind of just start getting hits even as you're aiming down sights. So I have found that that has won me a lot of fights. So I stick with it, even though there are, you know, lasers that'll help increase your ADS speed uh, and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. That's why I include that and you might try it out and see for yourself. Now these irons are actually really clean. I like them on the TAC-V as well. So if I were gonna ditch that, um, one thing I might choose with this 
is maybe a 40 round mag, although I don't know if running out of ammo is necessarily gonna be a big deal. Honestly, it's kind of the lack of another attachment that's really gonna increase the performance of the weapon. Another ammo attachment, that might be a good trade-off, um, but I'm using the optic because there's really not another good uh, trade-off in here, and I find that overall, um, that gives you a good clean sight picture, and you've got good balance performance, good fast ABS, uh, and that hip fire also helping out there too with that laser. So uh, that's my build for the TAC-56. And let's go and look at some streaks and give you some tips on what you can do to play better with the TAC-56. Okay, so as you're watching through these clips, rather than me talking through the entire thing, I wanna give you some things to look for and some things to pay attention to. And first I wanna talk about the TAC-56 overall style. And that is that this gun is effective, most effective, at medium range and the reason I say that is because with the smaller caliber of it versus say the cast off 762 it doesn't have quite the stopping power of the cast off um, and it has less recoil at range so it's more controllable controllable at range than say the cast off 762 um, but it also hits a little bit harder than an M4 so it's a good kind of in between between a fast firing low damage assault rifle and a slow firing high damage assault rifle where this one is kind of medium fire rate, medium damage, which makes it most effective at medium ranges. Like you can see me engaging here. I'm trying not to get up close and personal. I'm not, I'm not trying to be at close range point blank with this because um, you will lose most of those fights with the TAC-56. So as you're watching through the rest of this clip, keep in mind also this is Albagra, so I'm defending the main area on this broken map. If you didn't see that, my video on the Albagra map, Go check that out and uh, and just pay attention to the distance of engagements I'm trying to use with Attack 56 and uh, how I'm trying to play to its strengths. In this next clip, I want to highlight the TAC-56's mobility, so you can see that, you know, it's not an SMG, but as an assault rifle, you can be pretty aggressive with it and move aggressively, but also keep in mind that you want to try and again prioritize getting those medium range engagements, because it'll be, you'll be at a disadvantage at close range, so I'm using a lot of the mobility that I have here to disengage from people, to move further away from them, so that when I do get into fights, it's at medium to longer range, so I can take advantage of the strengths of the tactic pieces. Counter UAV ready. Changing mics. Counter UAV online. We've secured two objectives. Enemies taking out. Suppression mindset. Flash out! The enemy took Alpha. Use a drill charge! Enemies taking Charlie. The enemy holds all enemy In this next clip, we're on Tarak, which is a map, my least favorite map in Modern Warfare 2. I hate this map. Um, but it is pretty much a longer range map, so it shows the strength of the TAC-56 in longer range engagements. This is kind of its playground to an extent versus some of the closer range maps in this game. So in this clip, pay attention to, again, the medium to longer range engagements, but also at the end, when I get a surprise up close engagement, pay attention to how having that hip fire laser and having better hip fire on this weapon can help out in an emergency in close range. Request 
Requesting counter UAV. Got it. Counter UAV running signal is here. Confirming your call point. Stand by. Target area updated. Move to the reason why. So this next clip is on border crossing, which again, I know is controversial. If you didn't see my map on how to play better at border crossing, go check that out. But also watch my play uh, with the TAC-56 here, where again, to reemphasize, there's a lot of options for how you can move through border crossing. There's a lot of different range engagements you can get yourself into depending on how you move. So with the TAC-56, I'm trying to keep enemies at a distance and take advantage of the accuracy and relatively low recoil of the TAC-56 on this map with my engagements. So for this final clip on the hotel, I want to show you how you move through a relatively close quarters map like this while trying to emphasize getting those medium range engagements, like I'm hugging the back wall here, right, instead of peeking the corner up close. You'll see how this gun struggles in a couple of relatively uh, close up engagements that I get into uh, and how it does pretty well at those longer range engagements, especially if you can work in a headshot to that. So. Pay attention again in this last clip to engagement distance, tactical movement with the TAC-56, and how you want to take into account the overall traits, the overall strengths of your weapon, uh, no matter what the situation is, and change the way that you move and engage rather than trying to change the weapon to be versatile in every situation. Okay, minions, hopefully that was helpful for you, and hopefully you got some better ideas of how to use the TAC-56 effectively in Modern Warfare 2. If you missed my video on the Castoff 762, where I did something very similar, go check that out. Some good streaks in there, some good tips for that weapon, um, and you'll, you'll start to get an idea for how I build out most of my assault rifles to get that good balance. Each weapon has its own kind of personality, so it requires minor modifications on the same basic theme, so go check that out. Uh, leave this a like if you enjoyed it, a dislike if you didn't. If you want to see more stuff from me, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.